The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Okay, hey, welcome back everyone. This is Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host, Paul Gillen, Silicon Angle. We're here with uh, Kevin Custis, the global leader of mobile social business uh, for IBM, uh, global business services, which is huge. I mean, <laughs> IBM Global Services is well known, uh, has delivered amazing value over the years. I mean, we were just talking about yesterday, the 50th anniversary of the mainframe. Been doing it for decades and decades. Uh, welcome to The Cube. Thanks so much, thrilled to be here. So, you know, um, Dave Vellante and I always talk about when we do these CUBE events, we always talk to all oh, the big technology and introduction, new product announcement, but at the end of the day, the meat and the bone is the services angle, which is really, you know, when you put, this, put the technology into practice, the, it's, uh, it's the guys on the street, it's the customers rolling right. out the deployments. Is with one, money's being made, certainly the channel, partners, business partners. Um, money's being made and certainly saved and value and with the customers. So I got to ask right. you, what is the biggest disruption that you're seeing in the impact around this technology of cloud mobile and social with the services? Is it the, the, the cycle times? Is it the customers? Yeah. I mean, what is the big disruption points? Yeah, thanks John. I mean, I think you're, you're right. I mean, the services angle is uh, one of the most exciting in that we get to put these technologies to use, experience those disruptions up close with our, our clients. Uh, I've been doing uh, services and working on large scale transformation for, I guess it's scary, almost 20 years now. And I'll tell you, through all the waves of sort of, uh, uh, of technology change we've been through, there's no question that, that uh, mobile, social, um, you know, this, this, these, these technologies are having a huge disruption and it's, it's the uh, discontinuous na nature of, uh, of, of work. So we see the disruption in a couple of areas. One is um, engaging uh, consumers and you know, sort of the first wave we saw a couple years ago was just getting uh, traditional web apps out and extended. But now the innovation in terms of how that engagement can occur, how personal it can be, if you're not thinking that way, you're absolutely going to get left behind and any small startup can, uh, can really uh, uh, get between you and your customer. Um, within the enterprise, we see large disruption to all around process first, and, and that leads to then questions around operating model. And uh, you know, then the final disruption we see is in business model itself. How are we making revenue? How are industries transforming? So we see mobile as really one of the big catalysts along with analytics around these changes. Well, what industries in particular would you say uh, have, have uh, in which industries is mobile the most compelling uh, uh, priority right now? Uh, should, they, should they really be going mobile first in their right. development? Right, right. I mean, we, we organize around 17 industries and we tell clients every day that no industry is going to be left uh, untouched or undisrupted, so to, to start planning now. Uh, that said, we see heavy, heavy activity in, in banking, insurance, telco, health. <laughs> process change is going to be uh, discontinuous, the degree to which revenue models may change, uh, where the very value proposition may shift from a physical product to more heavily software or data intensive value proposition. Uh, so yeah, I guess um, if, if not paying attention, it would be something to be feared, but I really use that to mean the degree of discontinuous change within a, a process or an industry model. Kevin, I got to ask you, people, process, all that stuff, you know, you said transformation, you know, you, right. you've probably heard every single motivating speech you possibly could have heard of. It's every business book, process improvement. Right. We've been there, we've been through, a lot of those books are very relevant, but today it's different, it's a cultural mindset. So, in drawing on some of those practices, what is the big people change management process best practice that you've seen? Is, is there one, is there, is there the you know, win one for the Gipper speech? Is there the magic book out there right now? I mean, what's your experience of the best practice for some of these people side of the issues? Because yeah. the cultural is a huge issue. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's massive in any change effort. And uh, I see it a little different around uh, mobile and social. I mean, mobile, uh, many, 
people have already changed. Uh, from their, in their personal lives, their engagement with mobile, uh, what they expect out of these technologies. I mean, consumerization of IT, I guess it, it's, it, it's very appropriate here. So many of the big change initiatives, when we're talking about mobile, there's, there's a lot of pull from the user. There's a more intuition around how this is changing uh, the way they work, and therefore the value it drives in their, in their personal life. Uh, so I think that, that's actually the key, whether it's social, mobile, or, or cloud business model changes. Uh, are we making the direct connection to uh, how work changes and to the impact of, uh, of the user uh, on the user directly? Uh, so that's sort of the one key around these change initiatives that, that uh, we really advocate. Just make sure you render explicit that, that change uh, right down to the individual user. Okay, so we'll talk about the, the management now. So I, got, I totally buy that, by the way. Users already changed. Also, I've heard people say, CIO saying, see this iPad, make it run on this. So, it, what's the update on the management side of the people equation? Do yeah. you see the same kind of change adoption, or is that, they pretty much all have mobile phones, pretty much, but. No, I mean, I think the management side of the, the equation is, uh, is, is early, early days still, from, from my perspective. I mean, we, we uh, talked about mobile first, we launched the brand about a year and a half ago, uh, and the premise being that uh, the management would drive uh, fundamental changes in how, how work happens, and how we engage customers, and yet, you know, I'm just now starting to see big change initiatives driven by uh, senior management. You know, evidence of that would just be clients engaging us around programs like uh, something would be called you know, X Company Mobile 2020 or X Company Mobile 2015. And really setting out with, with senior management teams what that vision roadmap looks like. Uh, there's been a number of uh, barriers to that, whether that be uh, security, uh, whether that be just technical and, and sort of architectural clarity, but we're, we're starting to see that shift now. So I think we're sort of in the first inning of management really driving uh, significant change with these technologies. But we're seeing the landscape change so quickly. You know, by some estimates, over 70% of, uh, phone, of uh, uh, cell phones in the U.S. now are smartphones, right, which exactly. is a remarkable uh, growth in, in a short period of time. But humans don't accommodate change as fast as technology, so do you still run into skepticism out there from senior management about, well, do we really need a mobile strategy? Is it really worth the investment? You know, we, we, we I, I see less and less of that you know, every month. Um, there, there will have discussions on whether it's a mobile strategy or a digital strategy, and that's, that's you know, we think it's really both. I mean, it's, it's a digital strategy. We need mobile clarity on the, on the roadmap of mobile initiatives. Uh, but fewer and fewer on do we need that. And that whether that's uh, healthcare, uh, banking, or, or right down to an aggregates company, we have senior teams with some of our large, uh, very large industrial companies you wouldn't think would be at the front of that list that, that are now really looking at, okay, let's, let's put this strategy in place. Uh, how about B2B specifically? Yeah. I, think, I think we understand that for consumers, mobile is, is a must have now, but, but for companies that sell primarily to business buyers, right. are they seeing the compelling reasons that the consumer companies are? Yeah, I mean, I think the business uh, to, I think the answer is that absolutely yes. I mean, it, and it's not always, in, in, in that customer relationship, there's still an expectation for uh, real-time decision-making, for uh, improved clarity of, uh, and transparency of, um, of product and, and choice. Uh, and also, you know, a lot of the value is coming from just business to enterprise. I mean, on core process transformation, making yourself easier to do business with. So uh, we see business to business as being uh, as compelling as business to consumer and business to enterprise also being where a lot of the value is being driven right now. Have you seen any applications in the B2B realm specifically that have surprised you, where companies have found have found a value where you wouldn't really expect it? Yeah, a number, number are coming to mind right, right now for me that are that are particularly surprising. I mean, the, the uh, just sort of breadth of use cases right now that we're seeing there's um, in, in enterprise or on very traditional, well, I don't know if they're traditional, but they're along themes like workforce and talent management, themes like asset management or uh, supply chain and operations. Uh, field service has been done, but it's now being done a lot better when we combine that with asset management, with internet of things and the analytics that sit between those dimensions. You know, we see traditional areas like field service being done a lot better now uh, from a mobile point of view. So. Now that's the one thing that has been a little bit surprising is processes that have been well done and optimized, even mobilized. Uh, a study we just did called the Upwardly Mobile Enterprise pointed out that leaders that are really driving um, explicit mobile strategies are seeing still 20% uh, 
uh, improvement in productivity in those already optimized processes. Kevin, talk about the uh, IBM machinery for a second, and, and we'll tie that to the go-to-market with, right. the, with the customer environment. Obviously, a lot of action. You know, I was just I was saying to um, Steve Mills, it's like you walk into Nordstrom, you see the, guy, the suit on the rack. I want that suit. I, IBM has a has a good story right now. It's all hanging together. Maybe a little scarf needed, some gloves and some shoes. But but right now, the story and the technology is very relevant. Right. But with soft layer and you have these new acquisitions, how does that impact the go to market in terms of um, sales motion, um, partner relationships? It's new, but it's aggressively. Um, uh, put out there. I yeah. mean, pricing, I mean, who owns what, I mean, that's the, the fruit in the blender kind of changes the color of the, of the uh, frappuccino, if you will. But so, so how, do, how, does, how do you guys reconcile that with the customer base in terms of go-to-market pricing, channel conflict, et cetera? Well, let me step back from the question for just a minute. I mean, they think the, the um, it starts with the number of things it takes to be successful with a mobile strategy, with a deployment. And one thing that we see is as clients move from experimental phase, you know, five to 10 apps, to scaling this across a couple functions, 10 to 20 apps, and then really becoming a mobile enterprise where we're into hundreds of applications released more often. With that, there, there's a realization of uh, the need for some more of these components. Um, so first of all, from a services point of view, we've got an entire team working on, mo I'd call it mobile IT strategy, but advising the CIO, advising the application VPs around what are the capabilities it requires to, to scale. And I always say, you know, there, there's a set of things we've got to do, a set of best practices and capabilities to drive uh, speed and innovation you know, at scale in mobile. So that, that's a context we like to set before we talk about the product uh, discussions. And then, then the product discussions hang together a lot better and there's a lot more context for a client. Uh, from there, you know, in a services point of view, we're selling services. Uh, we team with our software colleagues that, that uh, in one go-to-market model, we go to market together uh, to our primary client set in GBS. Um, there's also some sort of new consumption models that we think are going to be very interesting for our clients and we... So on one hand, you basically stick it behind the curtain as Steve Mills would, yeah, that's not his words, but my, my takeaway, because he says, hey, we'll make it all work out. We'll split the accelerators, et cetera. That's the IBM machinery. But to the customer, it's one face, right? That's kind of the way you look at that. Yeah, In terms yeah. of cross division. Yeah, cross division, one face, absolutely. And again, we work uh, in GBS with, uh, in one way with the top set of clients, probably 2,500 in one manner. And then, you know, Steve and his team have got a much, much larger client base. And so uh, we work together with those 2,500 in, in a very, very close way. And, um, and so, yeah, it does work out. Uh, and as I mentioned, with, with some clients, we're starting to see, and I, a, an interest in seeing all that under one contract, one consumable sort of monthly model. So solution as a service, bringing together consulting capabilities, software, and our capabilities from our GTS colleagues, including SoftLayer, uh, into one very consumable model. And that's something that we have in market now. We've announced um, a set of managed cloud services, uh, and that model really does pull together all the IBM components. The, uh, the Customer experience is so important to mobility. Uh, what tactics do you use to test and, and to, uh, to iterate customer experience so that you're delivering the best possible experience uh, for, for the, the developers? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, absolutely uh, critical. I mean, we've got, uh, we've got to define a great solution to start with. We've got to have a really robust set of services on the back end of this equation, but if that experience isn't uh, second to none, we know that we're not going get, to get out of the gate. So, First thing we do is we invoke our uh, team we call IBM Interactive Experience. And we announced about four weeks ago a new capability or an, an extension of a capability we've had for years called IBM Interactive, which is our digital agency. Um, that digital agency, in fact, AdAge announced them as sort of the number one in the world by size today. Um, so within there, we've got a team called IBM Interactive Experience Mobile. And this is sort of the foundation capability within the mobile studios that we announced uh, at the conference, 18 of them this week. So within there, we've taken uh, uh, world-class UX talent, as well as great mobile designers, and we've really trained them all in the discipline of design. And they go through a set of methodologies collaboratively with clients to first envision the experience, map that journey out, quickly prototype that, put it in market with a test set of uh, clients, and continually iterate that. 
of course, we use tools like uh, IBM offers in the mobile tea leaf uh, capability to, to be able to rapidly iterate on, on uh, what we learn from feedback with those customers. So you, so you choose the customers to, uh, you'll help them choose the, the, the clients, uh, the customers to test the solution and to give them either they'll have a the Either they'll device. have those segmented or else we'll help them with that. We've been talking yeah. about the, uh, with the big data theme here at the conference about the, uh, the growing role of, of the chief data officer. Do you think that there'll be a chief mobility officer or really who should own mobile, if anyone? Yeah, we, we, we do see uh, all over the map. In the study we did called Definitely Mobile Enterprise I referenced, we still saw a heavy ownership from the CIO, uh, but with complement from CMO and line of business. Uh, but the chief digital officer is a, is a role that uh, oftentimes owns mobility. So right now, as I mentioned, I think we're in the, this sort of first inning around true transformation, mobile first. And, and right now what I see is uh, chief digital and CIO, typically each of those having a mobile leader. Mobile strategy leader, in the case of digital, mobile leader from a CIO organization point of view. So those are roles we're definitely starting to see emerge. Talk about some of the challenges around multi-vendor support when you have a open source component. I've heard from customers directly, um, just happened to be IBM Global Services that manages a big bank, um, come to me and said, I love OpenStack. And I go, what do you know about OpenStack? I'm not going to say the name of the company or the name of my friend, but he said, I don't know anything about it. All I know is yeah, I can look under the hood and, and make modular changes to it. And oh, by the way, I need POSIX compliance and I need IBM to support my Red Hat, my NetApp drives and my EMC drives. I go, I go, okay, so IBM supporting, uh, so again, that's a typical use case, I'm sure, not typical, but like the kind of environment that you guys are used to supporting. Um, so you bring in this OpenStack element where this is just, they want a bridge to the future. That's the number one thing we've heard. And so you guys are in these environments. So what are the big things that you guys um, do differently from some of the other uh, bigger players that, are, that have their own stuff, like HP and other companies that have their own services? Um, is, it, is there any differentiators around that? I mean, what can you share around that? Because that's pretty typical. Multi-vendor's been around for a while, but like, what's different with cloud? What are some of the key nuances that you can share? I mean, I think we, our teams run into uh, heterogeneous environments all the time, as you said, and when we look at all the components required to be successful in, in mobility, uh, our services teams expect that. Uh, so we, we, we lead with um, you know, those reference architectures, we lead with, uh, the IT strategy capability to really help clients work through you know, what, what stack makes the most sense in the long term, both or, or near term and then as they evolve in, in the long term. Uh, from a support point of view, we've got to be ready to support um, you know, the, the, uh, the, those multiple environments. And so I think the, the um, ability to have talent that can scale across all of those is, is really what we're great at and then applying underlying methodology to be able to manage those, those, uh, those capabilities uh, efficiently. So that's some of the capabilities that we Is mobile the top priority for CIOs and CXOs? Um, and, and how does the data equation come in there? Because, um, you know, as we were talking earlier with Bob Pacciano, and he's saying, you know, the big data right. equation is great, and the number one goal is to get that data into the application environment, right? So, yeah, no which is developer issue and also app issue on the mobile side. Um, is that a top issue, or is that still kind of lower in on the, the, the wish list? I think both are top issues. I think those are the top issues. I mean, what we hear from many of the analysts here at the event is that their mobiles went from you know, lower on the list, three to five, to, to either number one or two for CIOs. And uh, you know, big data and analytics is, is, is probably number one. I mean, I mentioned earlier, I see uh, analytics and mobile as sort of the disruptors. And, and sort of cloud is a major enabler in, in, in social playing in many of the use cases. So mobile's quickly, quickly risen up in terms of priorities with our CIO call. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta get a temperature from you on um, the real-time actual insights. Um, real-time is a game changer. We've been hearing about it. I mean, we're big fans of real-time. We're right. about real-time content. We're broadcasting live. <laughs> get the crowd chat going. Uh, but for businesses, um, what, where are they at when you work with engage with your with the customers around real time? Because that's kind of a really a mind bender at some level for customers. Right, right. I mean, it's a radical yeah. shift, not radical, but it's naturally a radical evolution. Right. Um, is it, it? You sit down and do a planning meeting. You have a huddle. You, <laughs> what happens? Right. I mean, are, we, are the cycle short? Is it? What's the, what's the time to value on the uh, on the mobile piece there around real time? 
I mean, I think the we've been working around this concept for for years, haven't we? With with uh, tech, technology executives, and I've done a number of retail use cases uh, ten years ago where we we thought how great it would be to have have closer to to real time, and and right now we've got uh, several clients that I'm thinking of that we're, we're working on, you know, really in terms of real time offer management, real time engagement. Um, a lot of excitement there, so it is. It is a mind blower. I mean, really getting down to one to one is is what we're uh, seeing the aspiration as, and I think now people are starting to believe it and getting their head around you know what it what it's going to take to make it happen. So, real time uh, one to one is is uh, on the on the roadmap of most of our clients, both from a data and a mobile point of view. What industries are you seeing where where mobile is is actually creating a competitive advantage right now to the greatest degree? I mean, I think um, retail we would assume would be one. Re but, uh, retail's uh, obvious one, yeah. I think I think all of those that I mentioned are candidates. I mean, banking we don't think we've really seen it yet, although we we haven't seen the disruption in banking. But in fact, you know, Bank of Montreal presented here. They were last in the App Store. They worked with us, put a new design together, put some interesting features. One of the ones they highlighted was just the ability to uh, notify when you're going out of the country, so your credit cards don't get shut off. You know, they became number one in the app store. So there's a. But know, did they gain share? So to to be determined. This is a, this is a new new. But certainly from a from a brand point of view, they're gaining advantage. And and does that translate to share points? We'll 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 see. I guess I wonder uh, the, maybe the, the bigger question is we were talking about social business earlier. We right. still have that question of the ROI of of having a social strategy. Are we going to have the same? question about mobile. I mean, two years from now, our CEO is going to be looking back at this and say, well, what was the payoff? Yeah, I, don't, I, I think in mobile there's uh, no question. In social, there's strong evidence of payback as well. But in, in mobile, when we, you know, the evidence we got back, 20% improvement in, in, in cost in a process. I mean, if I'm working in the aggregates or petroleum industry or natural resources industries, I don't have that kind of margin. If I can take 20 points out of my cost structure, um, by iterating on, on mobile, there's no question there's going to be an advantage there. At least that's that's uh, that's my my uh, my perspective. And we're working on this right now in our next iteration of our uh, study with our Institute for Business Value to really look at the evidence behind uh, value creation, competitive advantage. Um, so it's a great question. I think um, those are those are the top industries, but but I think all industries are candidates for for competitive advantage with mobility right now. On the future of the data center, we always like to talk about the software-defined data center. Are you hearing much about that in terms of the customers? Obviously, that's a big trend off, off network virtualization, which is changing the converged side of the business. Now, you guys kind of are letting go of your low-end x86 business, which is on the server side, but have power systems. Um, what are some of the conversations there? Is there a transitional period? Are you having customers saying, hey, uh, I might swap out some suppliers here, maybe go to another vendor, but I'll, I'll use Power8. Do they know about that? I mean, you've got all that stuff going on. Yeah, I spend, uh, in, in our GBS services team, I spend a lot less time with clients on those issues. Our, our global technology yeah. team spends a little bit more time, so I don't really have a very informed uh, point of view for you there <laughs> this afternoon. The, uh, you, you mentioned the, the study of the upwardly mobile enterprise. You're doing this with uh, another study with the IBM Institute for Business Value right now. What are you trying to, to find out with that study? Yeah, the first study's concluded about uh, 600 clients, and, and really there we were looking for just what are the practical things going on today? Where is the value being created, and what are the sort of um, 101 lessons in, in mobile deployment? So as we prepare for this next study, which we haven't launched yet, but we're just preparing for, what we're looking for now is is more the other end of the spectrum, is where's the uh, bleeding edge of innovation occurring, and what are the sort of value that's actually being driven, to your point, around competitive advantage. So the first one was actually what are the use cases in, that, that, that are being driven, and what defines leadership versus aspiring leadership? That's the one we've concluded. Now we're looking for really where's the disruption, where's the sort of bleeding edge in innovation, and what does that mean for, for various industries? You mentioned uh, the value of taking 20 points out of your out of your cost structure. Uh, thinking of what Maribel Lopez said when she was on the Cube yesterday, that that uh, internal applications are what are driving external applications. In other words, the money is all being the payoff is all internally, and that's what's enabling companies to experiment with external applications. Are you seeing the same thing with your cu your customers? Well, I, I I think we've seen that in social, and we are seeing that in mobile. I mean, it's it's uh, I don't know. It's the, the value internally is very tangible. We could we could get our hands around it. It's it's cost. So whether it's cycle time, 
um, or, or shifting operating models. I've got a very, very tangible way to count the benefits there, and then it gives me a case to invest externally. I think even the external cases with mobile are fascinating now in terms of uh, engagement. Maybe harder to put our hands on, am I getting more share, or what's, what's the corollary? But uh, yeah, so we do see that. I mean, I think that both are driving value. We could uh, count it more tangibly internally, and that helps us make a case to fund mobile across a broader set of use cases. Kevin, thanks for coming on theCUBE, we really appreciate it. I want to give you the final word. Share with the folks out there uh, to end this segment. Explain to them what's going on with global service that they may or may not know about what's happening uh, today for IBM, uh, given all the stuff we kind of talked about, the complexity of this market. Yeah, yeah no, thanks you. Thanks for spending time. And uh, global services is, is dedicated to uh, helping our clients with this, with this massive transformation opportunity. We mentioned it's the biggest thing I've seen. And we've uh, scaled this business from a few hundred consultants to several thousand now, and we could uh, continue to do that. Um, we're helping really, I think of it this year in terms of really accelerating the journey that, that you as clients are, are on. A couple things we've done is we've put points of presence with our interactive experience team in markets around the world. We just announced 18 together with Marie Week and with our GTS colleagues this year. So wherever you are in the world, we've got mobile experts, architects, designers, strategists ready to help define the experience. The other thing we've done is we've committed to putting together a set of accelerators. So we're really taking our hundreds of engagements we've worked on across our top industries, and we're bringing those experiences now in terms of a set of uh, strategy accelerators, business case, and really importantly, mobile app code, we call it ready apps, that help accelerate that journey. This is all about speed to value, experimentation, and, uh, and, and getting started. So GVS is committed to leadership, committed to helping you in market, as well as through global delivery, and it's got a set of assets to uh, really accelerate the journey. Kevin Custis, global leader, mobile, social business, two hot areas, it's all about real time, it's all about speed, value, efficiency, all that good stuff, doing more with less, reducing the time it takes, to get stuff done, it's all about big data. Thanks so much for coming Thanks, on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break, day two of IBM Impact coverage here on theCUBE.